Are you a Christian couple looking to establish a solid financial foundation for your household? That's what we're going to talk about today. We understand that for many of us money matters can be a bit tricky, but it's important to remember that financial stability is not just about having a comfortable life. It's about being able to serve others, to give generously, and to live out the values we hold dear as Christians. In this video, we're going to discuss some practical steps that you can take to build a financial foundation that is solid, resilient, and aligned with your faith. We'll talk about the importance of tithing, creating a budget that works for you, making smart decisions about saving and investing, and how to avoid the pitfalls of debt. So, are you ready to embark on this journey? Join us as we explore the steps you can take to build a strong financial foundation for your family. Firstly, understanding and embracing the concept of tithing is pivotal. But what exactly is tithing? Well, in its simplest form, tithing is giving one-tenth of your income back to God. This practice finds its roots in the Bible, specifically in the book of Leviticus, where it was instructed, a tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain or fruit, is the Lord's and is holy. Now, you might be wondering, what does this ancient practice have to do with my modern-day financial management? The answer is, quite a lot. When we tithe, we acknowledge that everything we have is a gift from God, and we give back a portion in gratitude and recognition of that fact. It's a way of putting God first in our lives, including our finances. Tithing is also a tangible way to express our faith. It's one thing to say we trust God with our lives, but it's another to trust Him with our finances. By tithing, we're saying, God, I trust you to provide for me, even when I give away a portion of what I have. Moreover, tithing can be a powerful tool for financial management. It instills discipline and helps us develop a habit of not spending everything we earn. It challenges us to live within our means and be more mindful of our spending habits. But let's be clear, tithing is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Prosperity doesn't always come in the form of material wealth. Sometimes, it's the peace of mind that comes from knowing you're living in alignment with your beliefs. Sometimes it's the joy of being part of a community and contributing to its well-being. And sometimes it's the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping to further the work of God in the world. So as we navigate the often complex world of personal finance, let's not forget the role of tithing. It's not a relic of the past, but a timeless principle that can guide us towards financial stability and spiritual growth. Remember, it's not just about money, it's about faith and gratitude. Scene script. Next, let's dive into the practical aspect of managing finances, creating a budget. Creating a budget isn't just about making sure we don't spend more than we earn. It's about taking control of our money so our money doesn't control us. It's about making intentional decisions with the resources we've been entrusted with so we can honor God, serve others, and live a more contented life. So where do we start? Well, the first step in creating a budget is to understand where our money is currently going. For the next month, keep track of every penny that leaves your pocket. You'll be surprised at how quickly those little expenses can add up. Once you've got a clear picture of your spending, it's time to set some goals. Maybe it's paying off debt, saving for a vacation, or giving more to your church or a charity. Whatever it is, make sure it's something that motivates you. Now, it's time to create your budget. Start with your income. Then, subtract your fixed expenses things like rent or mortgage, utilities, insurance, and tithing. What's left is your discretionary income. This is the money you have to spend on variable expenses like groceries, eating out, entertainment, and personal care. Here's where the real magic happens. Allocate your discretionary income to different spending categories based on your priorities and goals. But remember, the key to a successful budget is balance. It's important to leave room for fun and enjoyment while also making progress towards your financial goals. And finally, commit to sticking to your budget. Sure, there will be times when you'll need to adjust. Unexpected expenses come up and that's okay. The important thing is to make conscious decisions about your spending, rather than letting it happen by default. Remember, a budget is not about depriving yourself. It's about making your money work for you. It's about ensuring every dollar has a purpose. And that purpose aligns with your values and goals. A budget isn't a restriction, it's a tool for financial freedom. Now that you have a budget, it's time to look at saving and investing. These two financial habits are the twin pillars that support a solid financial foundation. 
Let's dive into why they are so important. First, let's talk about saving. Saving money isn't just about having a safety net, although that's also a crucial aspect of it. It's about preparing for the future, whether it's for emergencies, your children's education, or even your retirement. Every penny you set aside today is a step towards ensuring a more secure tomorrow. It's about acknowledging that life can be unpredictable and having a buffer can help you navigate through those unexpected storms. But saving alone isn't enough. This is where investing comes into play. Investing is about making your money work for you, about letting your wealth grow over time. Imagine planting a seed today and seeing it grow into a mighty tree in the future. That's what investing does to your money. Investing might sound intimidating, especially if you're new to it, but it doesn't have to be. The key is to start small and learn as you go. You can invest in various things like stocks, bonds, or mutual funds. Each of these investment types has its own set of risks and rewards, and it's important to understand them before diving in. Remember, the goal of investing isn't to get rich quick. Rather, it's about consistent growth over time. It's about patience, discipline, and understanding that wealth creation is a marathon, not a sprint. So, start saving, start investing. Make these habits a part of your financial routine. Just as you plan for your weekly meals or your annual vacation, plan for your financial future too. It's never too early or too late to start. Saving and investing are not just about accumulating wealth but about preparing for the future they are about building a legacy that you can pass on to the next generation they are about creating a sense of financial security and freedom and most importantly they are about honoring god with the resources he has entrusted to you another important step in financial management is avoiding unnecessary debt this might sound like a no-brainer but it's worth repeating because it's such a crucial part of establishing a firm financial foundation Debt, in its simplest form, is borrowed money that must be paid back, often with interest. Think of it as a ball and chain around your financial freedom. It's a hindrance, a burden, and it can keep you from reaching your financial goals. It's like trying to run a race with a heavy backpack. The more debt you have, the heavier the backpack, the slower you run, and the harder it becomes to cross the finish line. So how do we avoid this heavy backpack of debt? First, let's address the elephant in the room, credit cards. Credit cards can be a useful tool when used wisely, but they can also be a slippery slope into debt if not managed properly. It's easy to swipe that plastic and forget that it's real money we're spending. So, the first tip is to use credit cards sparingly and when you do use them, ensure you're able to pay off the balance in full each month. Second, live within your means. This might sound cliche, but it's one of the most effective ways to avoid unnecessary debt. If you're spending more than you're earning, you're heading towards debt. Create a budget, stick to it, and remember that just because you can buy something doesn't mean you should. Third, establish an emergency fund. This is a safety net that can prevent you from falling into debt when unexpected expenses arise. Ideally, this should be enough to cover three to six months of living expenses. Lastly, be cautious with loans. While some loans like a mortgage for a home can be considered an investment, Others, like high-interest payday loans, can lead you into a debt trap. Remember, borrowing may provide temporary relief, but it often leads to long-term financial stress. So let's aim to lighten that backpack and run our financial race with ease and speed. In conclusion, establishing a solid financial foundation is not just about money, but about living out your Christian values. We've journeyed through the essential steps together, starting with understanding the importance of tithing, which is not only a spiritual discipline, but also a way to support the work of the church. Next, we tackled the practicality of creating a budget. We learned that managing our resources wisely is a form of stewardship and being proactive about our finances is a step towards financial stability. We then ventured into the realms of saving and investing. It's not just about accumulating wealth, but about preparing for the future and being in a position to help others. Lastly, we discuss the significance of avoiding debt. By not being enslaved to lenders, we can live in freedom and peace. Take these steps to heart, apply them, and watch as your household's financial foundation becomes stronger day by day.